men don't like women like you. At least that's according to the author of the book, Men Don't Like Women Like You by G.L. Lambert. Ladies, have we got it wrong? Do we not know what these men like about us? Well, stay tuned to this episode because we're going to talk just about this book. Do the men really like us? I think they do. <laughs> what is mindset? Our mindset is based on what we believe and anything we believe in, we put into motion. I have spent my life putting the mindset of perseverance into motion. And now I am here today to share my journey along with others whose mindsets have changed the course of their lives. Hi, I'm mindset coach Lorraine Lindsay, and I believe that if you can change your mind, you have the power to change your life. So are you ready? Welcome back to another episode of The Mindsetters. And today we're talking about the mindset of men versus women, getting the women's perspective on a book that was written by the author G.L. Lambert. Uh, before I get into the book, please not forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the content, if you like what we are talking about, hit the subscribe button, send us your uh, thumbs up, let us know what you want to hear from us. I am your host, Coach Lorraine Lindsay. I am a certified peak performance mindset and life coach. And I'm here today with the fabulous lipstick ladies who are my wonderful reoccurring guests or my co-hosts, as I like mm -hmm. to affectionately call them. I've got Miss Charlene Ruiz. Mm -hmm. um, um, as you all know, Charlene Ruiz is a local mortgage broker here in town. She's been a broker for 20 years in the Las Vegas Valley. She's also um, a fitness coach and mentor for my time fitness coaching. Your time to be fit. Your time to be fit coaching. I don't know why. It's I do your that. time, girl. My time. My time. Okay, your time. Your time. Not, yeah. yeah, exactly. There you go. And then <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I'm zipping through this because we have a lot of good content and I want to get through and we only have a, a period of time. And of course, we've got my co-host, Carmen Smith, your local realtor. She's also an entrepreneur here in Las Vegas. Um, Carmen, thank you again for coming on the show. Thank you. If, you uh, if anyone out there is looking to buy or sell a house, by the way, you can call any one of us. Okay, <laughs> we'll get you approved. <laughs> We'll list it and we'll sell it, whatever you need. Okay, so anyways, moving forward. So, ah, that was a mouthful. That was good. Yeah, right? Okay, so ladies, Charlene this week had sent us um, an audible book um, that was called Men Don't Like Women Like You. Mm -hmm. And I was a little intrigued by the title mm -hmm. and I listened to the audible book and then I decided to download the, the Kindle version and, and read a few chapters and I was literally <laughs> like... Oh my goodness, I, um, wow. It was raw, it's a very raw book. Um, it's, I think it's very real, mm -hmm. I think it's very relevant. And I'd actually like to have men come on the show to give their perspective about it maybe next, uh, the next time we film. But for now, I would love us to share maybe our experiences with that and how real we actually think it is in, in terms of how we, I don't know, feel about what this man has to say. So. What is this book about? And I have a little thing here. It says, most men don't want you. And, and again, there's language here, okay? Mm -hmm. They want to F you, um, know the difference. Most men don't love you. They love what you do for them. Know the difference. Men don't love women like you is a step-by-step -step manual on how to stop manipulation, command attention, and be seen as a must-have by any man. So although the book is kind of raw, uh -huh. it is, it, it, according to the, uh, the summary, the author's intention is to really open our minds to really see that this is what men are thinking. So for a lot of people out there, it's getting to the right mindset for us as women when we're dating and trying to find like the right, the quintessential right man. You know, it's like, uh, is it time to kind of cut the cord? Or, you know, are we being naive about this situation or are we spot on? So I have a couple excerpts from the book. So we'll start with the first one, and then we'll talk right about I don't it. Okay. Know how I feel about this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth listening Listen, to we, too. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> maybe not. Or, or Charlene, you've been married for a very long uh -huh. time, but but like you said, the book can pertain to a lot of different things outside of just relationships. Yes. I think for Carmen and I, we've had our fair share of being in uh, long-term relationships and also going through the dating world. And so I think a lot of this will be applicable to us, actually. <laughs> I have anxiety right Do now. You? <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Uh -oh. Believe it or not, <laughs> it, when you're married for a long time, it's kind of like you're married to a different person often. So mm. there's some things that can relate. I love that's that. Where, that's a good point. Together. That's good. So yeah. trying to figure out where we're at and who we are at that time. So I love the book. It's okay. Great. Yeah. Right, okay. So go. here goes the first one. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little mouthful. You are the type of woman that men grow bored with and replace. Mm -hmm. 
This is from the book, okay? Your beauty, your brains, your perceived uniqueness is hype. <laughs> In your biased world, a man would be lucky to have a woman like you because you aren't like other females, right? We've all said yeah. that. The brutal truth that we men refuse to tell you is that you are painfully typical. Ouch. <laughs> You flirt like every other woman. You hold the same conversations as every other woman, all because you're obsessed with being loved like every other woman. Mm. <laughs> I had to put that one in there. Ow. What do we have to say right off the gate about that? Um, <laughs> what do I have to say? Hmm, the first time I don't have much to say right know, away. Right? I got to think I'm about like, that. Oh, I think that, um, you know, in generalizing human nature, perhaps that might be true, but we don't think so. We, no. we do think we are the best thing ever, right? I, I hope, anyways. We hold ourselves to a standard. But to your point, this book can go into so many different ways. So when listening to this, I think, think about relationships, but think about friendships, career, all of that when listening to the words. And if you haven't listened to the book, take an audio because he speaks the language <laughs> that he writes very good. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I believe we are all unique in our yes. own ways um i could see where we can be like typical you know a lot we i think we're just emotional beings a lot of women in general um but i was listening i just listened to the five minute audio so i didn't get all that out of it so not i'm not prepared but um i've been in situations where i feel like that exactly has happened to me where i think i'm this i'm that and it's like am i really that different and i've asked myself that question a lot and I know there's a lot of things that I I feel like I'm different in and then maybe not so much as I thought I was I don't know and I think and, and I, this is a, a a check that I've had for myself because I definitely will toot the horn and and tell myself no, I'm not like every other woman I'm I different think we all do though yeah mm -hmm. but this is this is what he's saying is mm -hmm. that we can think that in our own you know arrogant world in our own ego world that because we we want to be that for the man mm -hmm. and um and really having to realize that i can't be that for him mm -hmm. i got to be that for, for me myself, exactly. We're, and i have to instead of spending my time trying to prove because a lot of times when i was saying those things like i'm not like other women i've told men that oh i'm different i'm different mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and and really wanting more so to convince them than really believing mm -hmm. that for mm -hmm. myself and, and really having to understand that if I really truly believe that I'm different, that I'm special, that I'm a catch, that I'm the game changer as we'll talk about, I don't need to, I don't need to express that to that man. He's either going to get that about me and it mm -hmm. works or it doesn't. But if, for me to try to fit a square peg into a round hole, it's a waste of time. Right. And then you find yourself trying to figure out what it is that he wants for you to be different in. Right. And right, that's, right, a, that's right. a lesson learned. Like I, I started dating at 36 so i had a as an adult i start dating so i only know how to be one way and when somebody says they want something i would find myself trying to be that and it's like that ain't even who you are right so being really confident in who you are as a person and you're right if they that they have to see that in you you can't prove that it's not like pick me don't you mm -hmm. see me over here i don't want to be a pick me chick Right. I'm good at, I'm like, I ain't no pick me chick. Mm -hmm. You're either going to choose to be with me. I'm going to choose to be with you or we're going to be done with it. Right. What are you thinking? I, I'm just thinking we don't really have um, the truth of how to compare that. Mm -hmm. Cause right. Because we, we only have experience of right. ourselves yeah, as who a we woman. Are. Yeah. yeah. And we can see from the outside what other women may or may not be or what we think they, we know what their experiences mm -hmm. were before. But I just, I mean, I think that we just, regardless of what they think, we just got to. <laughs> believe what you need yeah we're so are. we're so outside in yeah instead of being inside out mm. we are so mm. worried and i'm not just women but men do the same thing too i think you know i can't speak for them I but uh them. i'd like to speak for them all yeah, the yeah. time because in my <laughs> mind i want them to be how i i want them to conform because you're a mindsetter yeah yes. exactly <laughs> but i think we often get trapped into stuff like this because we are trying to fit into what if we see that man my my ex-husband's a perfect example and I married the guy that I shouldn't have married, right? I wasn't the game changer in his life, nor was he for me, but we still went all the way to the marriage point. So just because you get the man and marry the man, it doesn't even mean that that necessarily was the, the fit, right? <laughs> well, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought with that. Oh, but I, I remember at that time in my life, I saw him as something I wanted to be in my life. I wanted him to be that husband, that man, that person for me. 
And so what I did, because I made that decision in my mind, is I lied. I ignored the red flags. I ignored his behaviors. I ignored his infidelity. I ignored the abuse because I'm like, nope, he'll get there eventually. <laughs> he'll be good eventually. And it was it was very uh, emotionally draining and depleting. And it was a complete waste. And now I can't say it was a waste of my time I, I, because I was young and it was part of my growth. And I definitely value better men as a result of that experience. And I actually see him now as a better man too, because I think he's grown in that experience as well. So I'm gonna go to the next bullet point here. It says, um, no man is hard to figure out. No man is emotionally unavailable. No man is unready to settle down. When a man tells you he's not looking for anything serious, he means with you. Okay. I can definitely accept that. I don't believe that any man, I believe when a man decides on the woman he wants to be with, he will settle down regardless of where he's at in his life. I think not only will he say that he will, but he'll show it. He'll show it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where I've made the mistake. I know Mm -hmm. a lot of women made the mistake Mm -hmm. is the empty promises. Mm -hmm. They listen to the man, tell the story and he's going to promise and he's going to do this and he's going to do that. And he never falls through, but it's such a beautiful picture that he's painted that you, uh, you know, you're kind of standing at the window looking at the picture, hopefully eventually being able to hang it up on a wall of yours. And it just usually is not going to, if a man doesn't go into motion right away, in my opinion, mm. he ain't going to ever do it. What do you think? Charlie? I think you that, got that look on your well, face. Well, because again, back to being <laughs> in a long term relationship. And I mean, you guys have both been too. Sometimes we get that at first and it shifts. Yeah. Then what? Yeah. You yeah, know, we exactly. have to, I mean, so it's a, it's an mm-hmm. ebb and flow. I think that we also, you know, contribute to the changes in our relationship equally, if not more, or, you know, more or less. And so it really depends. It depends on what we want and how we see it. At some time, we saw things one way, and as time goes on, it may not do the the, the, the standard creates a higher demand of some sort, whatever that may be, in order to prove your love to me is constant or whatever that might be. I'm so, I have, I give no grace. Yeah. I'm so brutal. Yeah. I, I guess yes and no, because I I've obviously I've been a repeat offender in my current relationship. We've been back repeat and forth, offender. back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> he knows yeah. it. He's probably watching like, yeah. oh, God, why should I have to say stuff? But that I mean, me and him have been on and off and on again. So I've given a lot of grace there and he's given me a lot of grace mm-hmm. and fairness. So um, and there have been times even in that relationship where I've questioned them. Am I settling? Is it just because I'm dealing with the devil I know versus the devil I don't mm-hmm. know? Is this really the one for me? And we've talked about that, but I've gone through those kind of questions and asked myself because of the, you know, the push and pull and the on again, off again. And, um, and even questioning that, you know, does he really love me? Why do we keep going mm-hmm. through this? And, and all those emotions. What I believe to be true about what you're saying is I think at one point or another, we all go through those thoughts in a relationship, especially when things aren't always on the ride to good or whatever. It doesn't mean conflict has to be there, but we grow. So we start to analyze and assess what we want in life and sometimes what we wanted doesn't equal what we want that so is we have true. to figure out what that is and yeah. and have you know enough of an understanding of who we are to realize that that partner we choose is our choice and we're going to take it in all the way or well or you not. both have to be on the same journey yeah. together because we we change mm-hmm. we evolve we want different things so if the per if that man is with you, he's gonna ride with you, mm-hmm. and vice versa. You know, it's just kind of like you gotta flow together. Um, I think as far as like trying to find it immediately when you're dating, you you gotta give it a little time. Yeah. You know, you gotta go through things because it's not, especially as you get older, because your standards change and things you want change. Experiences, so, yeah. Experiences. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes you just gotta ride it out for a little bit to see what happens. And I, don't, when you're I done, don't agree with that. I think the older you get, the more you should because the more you have know a you level are level of standard. Yeah. Well, you do have a level well, I mean, of standard. I, I'm not going to waste my time writing out something that just isn't working. I'm not saying like taking abuse or stuff. I'm just yeah. saying no, like I'm not getting the about opportunity abuse. to learn each other. I'm just talking other. about general like show up. This is what I want in my life. This is right. the standard on how I show up. And if you're not meeting me there, you got to go. I don't have time to wait for you to figure it out. I'm not talking about figuring it. I'm talking yeah. about learning somebody. So you have somebody right. who shows what, yeah. up in a way you like them to show up and maybe they're not showing up here the way you like. Yeah. It just right. depends. And you decide. And what does that what, look like? They, they right. may think they're doing it, but right. it's not. Do you give yeah. the, do you give them, are they worth the time to say, let's talk through this. Let's work through this. Or let's I see your efforts, it. but yeah. can you do it like this? But what yeah. makes someone worth the time? Is it worth the time because you don't want to, uh, or you're afraid maybe to move forward. I think there are certain things that are like clear lines, mm-hmm. you know, like I've been, uh, 
in my dating world, like right, especially when I got divorced, you know, I met someone. He was a he's a great guy. Um, he and I think he thought I was a great woman, but kind of to the point of these these things that these books are talking about. He even though he was a great guy, he I wasn't his game changing woman, right? You know, and 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 quite and quite frankly, he wasn't mine either. Although I had this illusion that maybe he was, but that's because I was still hurting and I needed him to fill a void for me. That part. Yeah. There's that a was, need. That was being the real. Met. Yes. Now, exactly. mind you, whether he understood it explicitly or not, in some way, he was okay with that because I fulfilled whatever void he needed in his life. The point is that at, it depends on where you are in your frame of mind. And, your, and Yes, your season, for sure. We can wait something out, but if we don't have a level of standard that that person is meeting from the start, then what are we waiting? Are we waiting for their standards to raise? Because it really depends on the circumstances. No, it's like Charlene said, sometimes they come in with that and they've met that standard. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, well, this isn't where it should be. So do you, you know, it's like you got, you know, when you need to cut it off. Right. right? Mm -hmm. But do you ever give somebody or reset or, right, or a reset? But mm -hmm. I don't know how you figure it out if they're worth it I or not. I think we should <laughs> all have like non-negotiables, right? Yeah. Like this is the standard, my well, non-negotiables. Yeah. I think yes. everybody has a non-negotiable. And if they meet that, then they're worth going on that second yeah. date, right? And if that second date, they show a little bit more. And now at this time you're communicating. Again, I may have been married a long time, but God forbid something ever happened. I have a, a standard that I would pursue yeah. in my life mm -hmm. too. And I, yeah. and I understand because I've learned a lot regardless of if it's with the same partner or not. But the, the bottom line is we change and what we right. want in life changes with that. So whomever we invite to be that partner in our life has to have some type of a growth ability to come along or is at a place where they're good and you're good with yeah. where they're at. Right. And although I still am growing, doesn't mean because we're good as long as that's, but we don't that's always know that's a good point. That. I think it's a matter of you understanding your own core values yes. and having your, your unwaivable standards, right? Mm -hmm. And making sure that, that what that core value is within you is in alignment with that person. Exactly. And if you have to constantly have to uh, wait for it and hope for it, and they're not meeting that core value, that's not a, you're going to feel like shit in that relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just are. When things, when that person is not in alignment and, and giving you the level of love and respect that you, that you give, that you give innately, you're, it's not in alignment with your core values. It's mm -hmm. not going to feel good. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel depleted and you're going to feel drained and you're going to feel hurt. And, and waiting for that person to catch up to your standard and what's or your core value. Sometimes you just got to know that this yep. is not, mm -hmm. even if that person becomes that later, mm -hmm. they're going to do that for the person that they feel is worthy of it. They're not doing that for you. They're not going to. Maybe that's their learning growth is that I part. Mean, yeah. This is why I love the book because that's exactly what this man is saying in the book. He's saying like, listen, you know, we, us ladies, we, we, we can be a little naive when we think that we're all that. And we're God's gift to that man. And you're never going to get better. Th that's you deciding that for him. He hasn't made that decision for you. So you better like get it together mm -hmm. and say, I don't need to be that for him. I am that mm -hmm. for the person that's supposed to be in my life. Right. Exactly. And not, and not yeah. everybody's going to see that in you and you're not going to see it in them. And yeah. everybody that comes into your life isn't meant to be that or yeah. have that. Right. Yeah. So, and sometimes they're just, they're just there for the moment and you're Place using holders. it for, yeah, for what you want to use it for. And they're they, using you for what they want to yeah. use you for. It's, sometimes also and sometimes it's okay to be in that space because you don't want to be in something serious anyway so it's like but you have to be clear on that yes yeah. oh yeah, and yeah i think yeah, what yeah. that's another lie we tell ourselves is it? I, yeah absolutely i think also that maybe that person is that and something changes either they maybe they're going through depression or addiction or another and the, i mean there could be so many reasons why people change if they were already that too and how do we make it through that that's depending on where we're at and what we want to tolerate at that time of our life so there's many different reasons people can show up being that person in alignment with you and they could change so here's so. A, here's an excerpt from the book it says if you let him excuse my language if you i'm gonna I'm not use the language if mm -hmm. you let him f f because he waited and put your faith in time spent on a as opposed to time discovery, you have no one to blame but yourself when he suddenly vanishes. A man can lie and say that he's ready for a relationship, but in reality, he's either comfortable with you as a placeholder or feeling pressure to give you what you want so he can get or keep getting your benefits. Okay. If you agree to that title without making that man show you that love, it's going to be your bad when it crumbles because you didn't question the man's motive and allowed yourself to be claimed. Women have the power to say no at every point. A man has to ask permission to take you out, to sleep with you, and even to commit to you. So again, if he Fs you over, you can't blame the person that played you until you look at the person that gave permission. I could agree with that. 
here's, I mean, again, I have lots of girlfriends and, you know, some of them honor their bodies and they wait and some of them, I get it. We have needs and it's that time or whatever. But if you don't show somebody how to treat you and how to respect you, then how do they value that? Some men really take that serious. Some men are like, all good. We fell in love from this place. So really identifying who you are, even in that, to that point there, I'm, I'm assuming. And, it, and you know what? Speaking of that, Charlene, like he says something in the book, I wrote this one down. It says, when is the right time to have mm -hmm. sex? And he says, it doesn't necessarily mean you got to wait till mm -hmm. the end of time and hold out. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't really necessarily matter to the man if he's off doing his thing anyway. You know, he'll wait in the wings. But it says I it's time and effort, mm -hmm. um, the aggressive pursuit, and your first choice as a um, as a conflict. Wait, I can't, I can't even understand my own handwriting. Mm -hmm. Your first choice as, I can't, I can't even, it was good. But I, yeah, you know, yeah, I got you. Got you. <laughs> Sometimes it'd be like, is it that deep all the time? Okay, I don't believe that. I believe that, when, are we talking about sex right now? Part, yeah, part okay. of it and how we expect that. So yeah. I've, I've been in that situ situations where, yeah, I've tried to be this for, and that for somebody, whatever, the last expert, excerpt you read, whatever. As far as sex goes. I've also been in situations where that's all I wanted mm -hmm. from somebody. I didn't feel that's your way understanding. About it. Yeah, right. So I don't think it's always has to. Every person is not designed to be that guy in your life. I think he's speaking every, about expectations. If we expect something from that person, but let's say it is just a fling. I have needs. Right. I want to do what I got to do, but there's nothing else. So we have to be clear as women mm -hmm. identifying what we're doing in the relationship, mm -hmm. where we're at and mm -hmm. what we want out of it. Correct. I think we need to be women clear about what we actually want for our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, so I, what, when we bring a person into our life, a man, mm -hmm. to be in our life, we have to identify how we want him to fit in our life, correct? What we want out of that person. And so it doesn't always have to be like, I want this person to marry him or anything like that. I could have fun. I can go yeah. out. That, that I could depends have on where like you're date. at. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I, there's exceptions that, to so that for sure. So that's what I mean. Like, I don't want people to think, like, everything has to be so, like... Every I think in this case here, he's talking about actually falling in love, like a, like a real solid relationship. Sometimes from that place, it mm -hmm. turns into that, too, when you don't know that it's happening. But Right. And happens. depending on what stage we're at in our life, are yeah. we even ready to accept that? You know, we might think that. I know getting out of my marriage for a long time, all I knew was that. So going into relationships, it seemed like that's all I was looking for, to be in a relationship, be in love. I wasn't ready for that, mm -hmm. you know, and I had to go through things to realize I'm not ready for that. I don't. I wasn't even prepared to be that for somebody else mm -hmm. and really taking accountability for myself. Well, since this book is not really about what the title is, we can even take that example and turn it into not sex, not a relationship, man and woman, right. but anything else. In no, life. I was just talking specifically. Yeah, about yeah no, no, we I get just, that yeah. for sure. But just to kind of put that thought out there on that. But I think the, the mistake, and I, I'm, I'm a queen, wear my heart on my sleeve. I, I fall, you know, I fall hard, whatever. I, I've made a ton of mistakes. <laughs> we all have made <laughs> You them. know, like. I don't want to sit here like I'm so self-righteous and I got it d down packed or whatever. But I just think that as women, we really have to be intentional and accountable to ourselves. Absolutely. And sometimes we do allow men to change our standards because we do want to be that game changer and really learn like. But at the moment you change your standards for a man, it. the yeah. moment you are no longer a game changer. Right, You're a that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you have to be accountable and that's in what, that. That's and, what the whole yeah. point of this show is. It's yeah. for people to tap into that mindset because a lot of women do it. They lie to themselves about the about these men that are in their lives. And, and I love the book because it's just raw. Mm -hmm. You're either that game changer or you're that placeholder. There There is no gray area there. Right. That's who you are in the eyes of a man according to this author mind you mm -hmm. there are always going to be variables there are always going to be situations i think that um personally and again I, I can't speak for men but from my understanding my experience um like like it said you know there every man has an availability but it's an availability to the woman that they feel is that game changer yeah. for their lives and and i think that men have to be in a in a emotional mindset that they're ready for that mm -hmm. When a man is just out there doing his thing and living life, and it doesn't mean he's necessarily a promiscuous man and he's out there, you know, hole hopping or whatever, or it doesn't necessarily equate that every man that's not settling down means he's out there doing his thing. But when a man gets into a mindset that he is ready to be uh, in a serious relationship or he's looking for a game-changing woman, when he makes that switch in his brain, he sees every woman different. 
every good game changing yeah. woman that ever crossed his life, if he wasn't ready for her in his mind, didn't care for that, didn't want to be that deep, he she'll pass him by. Well, you to, know, so we're yeah, and I yeah. guess what the saying is that we have to get out of our heads that we're that that unique. We are special right. and we are unique to ourselves. But we don't have to be that for every man no, out there because we're desperate and obsessed with being in love with somebody. I think that's the point I was trying mm -hmm. to make. You yeah. don't have to be that for everybody. And you won't be that for everybody. No, you and I don't want unique, to be that yeah, for everybody. As unique as you are, one you is won't enough. Be that. Trust me. Because I've been there like, how could you not want me? I'm great. <laughs> I look good. I work. I take care of myself. I'm all this that a man says he wants, but yet it's still not me. And like it said in the beginning, he says that every woman says uh -huh. that. Yeah, right. Exactly. We think we're the only ones saying that and letting him know. And that, and he's like typical woman. Right. And then it's two other women here that are the same way. Right. So we're not that unique. Mm -hmm. So he says in the next uh, PowerPoint, it says there are two types of women, which you've kind of already went into. And it's the placeholder and the game changer. You are the placeholder that girl, um, you are the placeholder, that girl who fills a man's need until the game changer arrives. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read a little excerpt from the book. Um, uh, this is uh, about the game placeholders and game changers. You think you're Excalibur by default. You don't know what other women do or don't do outside of your friends. So again, you rationalize that the way you act is unique because it lands you steady dates or boyfriends. Mm -hmm. However, this is also misleading because men treat the objects as if they are romantic interests. Despite the bonding, the dating, even the commitment, he still doesn't think of you as the one. Why is he suddenly bored, spending more time with his friends than you, breaking his neck to look at other women, or unable to verbalize how... Sorry, I have to go on to the next... Um, oh, I think I just left it at that. Most men won't tell you that you aren't the game changer material. They will let you assume that you are in a cowardly act of wanting to maintain comfort until she appears. Even if you're reading this and have a boyfriend, you may just be a placeholder. Um, he cares about you. He does a few nice things. He tells you he loves you, but he isn't in love with you. Who falls in love with a temp? <laughs> Men lie about how much they <laughs> love you. They fake relationships and treat women. Uh, they treat pussy. Okay, I'm going to say what it says <laughs> as if it's wifey. When they don't actually have to go that far just to get convenient sex or stress-free companionship. Nevertheless, the Achilles heel that brings the average woman down isn't the fact that men lie. It's the fact that women are so consumed with trying to become that or trying to become what a man wants forever that they ignore his lies in hopes that they can win him over eventually. No relationship should be built on eventually. Hmm. And again, it goes back to that. Like, and, and, and I, like I said, even for my ex-husband, and I married this man, mm -hmm. I thought in my naive world that I was the game changer. And I believe, and now he married me. But when I look back on that relationship and I reflect, he didn't want to lose me. There was a sense of control. I remember when he got engaged to me, it was just in his mind, and I don't want to speak for him, but from what I understand, it was more just to keep other guys away because we had a long distance relationship. But when we got married, he was not a husband. Mm -hmm. He was not. Sounds like men need to be more accountable, too. Mm -hmm. But we can say that they want to be, and we can create those illusions in our mind. But the, but, And I don't think that there aren't men out there who are accountable. But I think that, again, it goes, it goes back to a sense of self. When a man is ready for his game changer, he's going he's gonna, to... As much as women are beautiful and sex sells, and we, and we have it like that, we are so weak because of our obsession with being in love with men, so to speak. And I, I know this is probably some feminists and people are probably going to hate me for saying that, but let's just keep it real. You know, a guy could be average. He could be okay. He could be drop dead gorgeous. If he's doing well for himself or he's got the right talk, every woman just wants him. Mm -hmm. So they have the options, right? We have them too, but we always act like our life is going to be over if we don't find the perfect man. We act like there's so much scarcity in that. We don't get the grace when we old age, the men do. And it's not a bitter thing. It's just like, listen, ladies, if the guy isn't seeing you as the game changer and you recognize that and that's what you want, you want a man to see you as a game changer, if he doesn't see you as such, you're a placeholder. Just acknowledge that and keep mm -hmm. it moving unless you're okay being a placeholder. It's like an investment. So are you going to keep putting money into that investment if you keep losing money? I mean, you got to see where is that right. growth? How is that compounding for you as we change in life? I'm telling you, when I was reading this book, I was just like, ouch. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Oh, yeah. It's painful it is. because especially when you're being in the placeholder position, because I've been that woman 
um, you know, sometimes the guy's really great and he's really sweet and he's very endearing. But there are things that I am ignoring. You know, there's things where I'm just like. Eh. When you're ignoring it, are you telling yourself a story as to why? Yeah, sometimes I tell I don't really care. Like, I'm doing my own thing. Well, he can do what he wants. I don't care. It's not true. It's do you a ever lie. say, oh, everybody's got that. Everybody's going yeah, to Or do there's that. problems with everybody. Yeah. Like, again, the devil you know versus the devil you don't know. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, like I said, when I, the first guy that I dated, um, right after I got divorced, he was such a nice dude. But I remember the first time we were intimate. Um, I remember he literally turned over and went all the way to the other side of the bed. <laughs> and I was like... I'm used to being cuddled yeah. and loved on that's and I'm funny. the boo and I'm, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. And yeah. he didn't want any affection. And any, no, I was a placeholder. <laughs> and we had a great time and, and we we're friendly to this day. I mean, I don't really talk yeah. to him, but we're, we were friendly and he's a deep dude. He's profound. I think he's a, a really cool person. But um, at that time in his life, I was just a placeholder. You know, mm -hmm. if I would have met him 10 years later or something like that, maybe it would have been different. Who knows? Who cares? But even my... Uh, you know, my fiance now, he was, he had a bad relationship and he went through placeholders mm -hmm. and then he had to make the switch first when he is like, I'm done with these placeholders. It's because he met a unique girl. No, it isn't. Uh, I'm it kidding. Isn't. I know I'm kidding. I okay. love you yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah, no, but I have to be honest with myself. Right. It isn't because he met me and I'm unique. I am unique, but I know that about myself, but it was time and place. Mm -hmm. He was ready for a woman who was a certain thing for him, but he was, had to be that first in his mind. Mm -hmm. And he was tired of having placeholders. So he made that decision before he met me. And it was just a matter of a, a timing for him. Do you think that's how it is for all men, though, that they are, they literally say it in their head, I'm ready for this now. And no. then whoever, no, they, or, no. or is it they meet that woman and then they say. It happens. I think it just happens. I think there's a hundred different million different yeah. variables. I mean, we're obviously being very vague mm -hmm. here. But I think that, um. But I do think that we are one or the other with a man. I, I believe that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe that. And I think sometimes we have the same thing. I mean, men yeah. don't get it twisted. We have times in our life, like you said, where you're just a placeholder. Mm -hmm. I went through that. I had a, I, another example. I met a great guy. Um, I was with him for a long time, and he was very doting. He, he wanted me to be his game changer. He wanted to get married. He wanted to settle down. He was a really nice man, and I was not emotionally available. <laughs> I, I was so mean to him. I, I feel he bad. Wasn't, but he wasn't your game changer. No, he was my placeholder. Right. So that mm -hmm. has to that, be in yeah. alignment, yeah. right? We Correct. both have to be yeah. each other's mm -hmm. placeholder. But that's the thing. It's like, what's the the mindset here is to see <clears throat> this. The whole point of me even wanting to talk about this is that a lot of people out there are in these deadbeat relationships or they're stuck in situations where they're not happy. Because they wanted to look a certain way. I mean, sometimes people, because to that point, mm -hmm. by this age, I want to be married and whoever comes my way that meets enough um, that's her or him, you know, and so my life has to look like this, even though really they settled for and something. And you know, another thing I think is a big problem, and I hear this all the time, and I've done this myself too, is the time you invest, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes women invest so much time into their eventually guy, the guy that isn't uh, giving them what they want, or but they invest and they invest and they invest. And the biggest fear they have, it's like a gambler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the biggest fear <laughs> that they funny. have is the moment they let him go, he's going to find the one to marry her right away. And that happens. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to let that go because I groomed him and I made him. No, you didn't. You just weren't the one. Mm -hmm. And we got to be honest with ourselves about that. Mm -hmm. And it's painful to hear it. But if he didn't see you as the one, F him. You are special and unique, but you got to know that about yourself. And then that one will see you because you, you, won't, <laughs> you won't need to be for him. You just will be mm -hmm. that because you're that for yourself, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I know like common hates hate when that. I'm like getting all deep mm -hmm. and philosophical. <laughs> Uh, but it's just the way my brain mm -hmm. thinks, and and I believe that um, we have to we have to set our minds. We have to see things for what they are, and and I, and I'm just rambling. So somebody else say something. No, you're right. No, that's <laughs> that's good. That's good stuff, girl. No, that yeah. book it, uh, that good. is painful because I could see myself a lot in past relationships, current. You know, you just got to figure it out. I mean, I don't know what the answer is. It's just with the women, answer is truth. Just, yeah, it's true. And being true with what you want. Yeah, of course. Um, we just have those things called feelings. And sometimes they just get in the way of bullshit. You know, yeah. like our heart. I think men think with their penis and we just our heart takes over. You know, there's something in the book. The and brain, like, there is something in the book. And, and we literally have. 
five minutes, mm-hmm. but there's literally something on, the, there's a chapter on the book uh, for anybody who wants to go and read the book, but it literally talks about if that's a true thing. We as women, according to mm-hmm. this author, think that men only think with their penis, but it's not true. Mm-hmm. They only think with their, they only think with, according to the author, of course, they only think with their penis with the women they can think with their penis with. Men are always going to have sex as an agenda, but how that shows up depends on the woman and then the time frame that they're in their lives. Well, we tell ourselves that, oh, it's our heart and it's their penis, and that's a lie. I don't know if it's always a lie. I think just like you said, who, yeah. who you're dealing with. So if I'm dealing with somebody like that, it's my heart taking over when I should be thinking rationally, and I've allowed my heart to get in the way. And when a man is with a woman where his penis is thinking, you know, it's just yeah. where you're at in that. Yeah. But I get exactly what that is saying. The more we're in I, tune with ourselves, I think we'll see things for what they really are, yeah. depending on what we want to. Sometimes we're still on the journey of self and we can't see things yeah. because we're, we are not there yet. You know, are whoever. we ever going to be there? I, <laughs> I think so. I think we I do. Think so, but I think it comes with being more honest. And I think mm-hmm. when we say we're thinking with our heart, I don't think that's always the truth. No, I think I'm when saying we say when feelings... When we talk about feelings, it could be fear. It could be. I think a yeah, lot of times loss. it's fear, mm-hmm. and we're and we're saying that it's love, and and I think love when when it's real love, then there's certain things that you just won't accept. It's light too. It's not heavy. Yeah. There's circumstances that are heavy, but it, love is light to me. I feel like it's when it flows, it's just more mm-hmm. genuine. And how do you find that? You got to be that, you know. And then yeah, you got to be. And and then like you said in the beginning, you know, I, like I I was married for a really long time. So the love was there. That was that yeah. was unquestionable, mm-hmm. right? And then it becomes other things that get in the way. Right. You know, and, and situations. And it's not about do I love this person? Of course I love him. Yeah. But not not marriage. Not, yeah. We're yeah. talking about courtships yeah. and getting yeah. to know No, I somebody. get that. But yeah. I'm just saying through time, when even when you're courting someone, you know, we say we we use the word love loosely anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can't fall in love with everybody. There's just levels to that. Um, I think that what happens, and I'll just speak for myself. You know, you get emotionally invested with somebody and then it clouds your judgment. But I don't think that doesn't mean you ha- you don't have a self a sense of self. I don't think that. I think you're always learning who you are, what you want. You got to go through experiences to even know what you want, right? I don't think love is enough either. I think no, love, love is, is not is enough. Must, but it's... And then you go back, I didn't love that. He just laid it down good or this was, mm, I, you yeah. know, it was just this about him that I was lacking in that moment. I find it very moment. difficult to believe you have a good, strong sense of yourself when you let people mistreat you. I don't think, I don't believe that. I think that if you're allowing people to mistreat you and to deceive you and it, But what is mistreat? Is it, is it your, is it just because that person makes you feel bad or you're not, I mean, I've been in bad situations. I've been in I mean, good situations. You have people. I think, you, I think we all know when we've been in a situation where someone has done is wrong. But my point of saying you're searching for yourself always constantly. Yeah. It doesn't mean you don't have a sense of self. You may have never been through something. I remember I got in a really, and I'm gonna make it real quick that was um, extremely, like, he was verbally abusive. Mm-hmm. And I never, I didn't understand that type of type of person. So it was kind of like, I didn't know how to deal with it. And I probably took the abuse because I was trying to, I didn't know how to take it, you right. know, but now I learned from that. And I'm like, that's something I can't deal with. But I didn't know that then. So I didn't have that sense of self because I, that's. Well, that's a standard thing. That's what I mean by sense gross. of self. Right. So you have to go through things to figure mm-hmm. that out. But you didn't stay there. No, no. Well, yeah, that's a whole nother story. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I don't think you, you know, I don't, I just mean like, we know we've mm-hmm. lived long enough. We know when a person isn't doing the right thing by us. Right. We know that. If we accept that in our lives, it's because we haven't gotten to a sense of self that is a reflection of love. We will not allow people to mistreat us unless somewhere in the back of our mind we feel we deserve it. That is the truth for whatever reason being. And, and there is a there is a key for you to really dig in sense of self. Sense of self, and I mean it like an abundance and there's love and you believe that, that your standard is this, you will not accept to be mistreated. And if you are being mistreated, then you need to really tap in and say, what is it about me that I have deemed this acceptable for my life? And that is a reflection of whether or not how much of a sense of self you really truly have. And these books are an example of smart people learn from their own mistakes, but wise people learn from the mistakes of others. These are tips to help us shortcut into where we're going and who we are and how to get there. That's how I see it. So this was juicy. And it was good. How do we want to round it up? We've got where we hit the clock right on the mark. I know Quan's going to be very proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's-
it's a heavy topic, mm-hmm. and I know it can stir up a lot of things because mm-hmm. we've all been through different things yeah, and going through things. Yeah, like, what is wrong? Okay, am I still tripping off this? But that's that? good. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But that's the questions that I want people yeah. to ask mm-hmm. themselves. I want them to get riled up when they listen There's to it. There's nothing wrong with you. It it's needs a, to trigger. If it's yeah. triggering mm-hmm. something that you feel like you have to defend, then that's a place that you need to tap to into on. and say, okay, that upset me. That triggers something. I was offended by that. I need to defend this. You're defending it because there's truth in what is being said. And that's a good way to check into your mindset and to your sense of self. All right. So what do you yeah. ladies want to say before we close up? I think I said it. I think that, um, you know, these conversations that we have like this on these topics are specifically to help other people. Mm-hmm. We all have our own set of experiences and we want to share with you so maybe something mm-hmm. resonates or take some notes and look if it looks familiar it doesn't mean it has to be exact but these are you know tools to help you fast forward <laughs> what i'm a mess in love but i guess i don't no. know <laughs> no you're not a no, mess not in love at all i got issues we all got issues we all do. but we all have to accept them and we Absolutely. all have to learn from them and there's no right or wrong or good no or bad. there's not there's you know, not our choice but i am a feelings person <laughs> yeah i lead with my and that's heart beautiful a lot beautiful yeah. beautifully I broken there's wrong with that yeah. and don't say you're beautifully broken don't own that uh-uh. you know i don't i think that that's fair and i think it's a beautiful thing to be a woman who leads with your heart mm-hmm. i just want you like i want all of us to be that kind of woman mm-hmm. uh and also seen as the game changer mm-hmm. there is a man for that will come into your life that will say i love that she leads with her heart and she's my game changer and period and that needs to be the end of it and, and the game is our choice Ooh, that you left us with a clip mm-hmm. note. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. So if you like the show, you like the content, this was a heavy topic. Uh, hopefully next week we can get some of the fellas in to talk about this topic and get their perspective. Again, if you like the show, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, send us your comments. Give us the thumbs up. We love to hear from you. And thank you again for watching another episode of The Mindsetters. Bye. Ciao.